It's that moment again. The one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite. Of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Le sacrifice que tu fais. Quand toutes les chances sont contre toi. When you can't push one more second. Chase the glory. Viseo. Good afternoon, welcome to Merlis Belcher Place in Saskatoon as we are set for quarterfinal number three here at the GFL 2024 U Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy on CBC. I'm Ryan Flaherty alongside Rihanna Kaminsky. We've had two great quarterfinals so far. We're excited for this third one between the Canada West champion UBC Thunderbirds and the RSEQ finalists, the Montreal Carabin, a rematch of last year's bronze medal game and uh, as you can see we've already had a couple of uh, teams go through to the semifinals here on Thursday both Concordia and Waterloo have advanced and now two more teams looking to punch their ticket to the next round starting here with Montreal and UBC who will then move on to face the winner of tonight's fourth quarter final uh, again between UNB and Toronto so Brianna a uh, bit of contrasting styles here. Let's talk about UBC, first of all, the Canada West champs. Three straight Canada West titles, in fact. Uh, what are you looking for from them here in this uh, rematch of last year's bronze medal game? Well, of course, they're going to come out hard. They are going to come out hungry. They are looking for their first ever national title. So they're going to be a powerhouse, to, much like they were all season in Canada West. They're going to come in and really be pushing around, just trying to do what they can to punch their ticket into the quarterfinals. Number seven seed Montreal likely would be the eight seed based on their record, if not for the fact that, of course, they want to set up the tournament so you don't have conference rivals meeting in the first round. So by virtue of that, they're in the number seven slot to set up this rematch. Montreal, just a 13 and 10 record during the regular season, but they took the number one ranked Concordia Stingers the three games of the RSEQ final, and they are going to be a tough out here for UBC. And certainly Montreal doesn't feel like a seven seed. No, they definitely do not. They are going to be coming for some redemption after that bronze medal game last year. A little bit more of a very responsible defensive team that is looking with a lot of attention to detail in their game. And they're also going to be coming out just as hard as you can see as, like I said, for that redemption. Should be a lot of fun here as we're just a few minutes away from puck drop. Lots of local kids in the stands too. The atmosphere going to be hard to beat here this afternoon. Coming up after the break, we'll have the opening face-off live from the University of Saskatchewan. You're watching the GFL 2024 U Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy on CBC. for talented players to join our team. The Health Sciences Association of Saskatchewan is a union representing an all-star team of over 4,000 specialized healthcare professionals, giving it their all in over 30 professions within Saskatchewan. Our members are geared up and at the drop of a puck are ready to help you get your health back in the game. You'll find our members in hospitals, emergency services, communities, and long-term care. Your hometown team, ready to assist you in reaching your health goals. HSAS are proud sponsors of the gold medal game in support of the Saskatoon Food Bank.
en direct d'événements sportifs. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Back inside Merlis Belcher Place here in Saskatoon as we're just about set for the uh, anthems, the pre-game ceremony that they've been doing before each game here at the National Championship, a star blanket ceremony. The captains from each of the respective teams being uh, presented with special star blankets uh, from the chief of the Saskatoon Tribal Council, Mark Arcand. Uh, this is a nice touch. It's been going on kind of all season in a couple of different sports as well as uh, that connection between the local community and the indigenous community uh, strengthening here on the continued path towards reconciliation. Now time for the Treaty 6 song and O Canada.
He battled for bronze a year ago, and now they both want the gold. That would be the Golden Path Trophy, but only one of these two teams will have the opportunity to hoist it potentially on Sunday. UBC Thunderbirds, as they've been progressing at this national championship for the last couple of years, fifth place in 2022, a bronze medal last year with a win over these very Montreal Carabin, and now the three straight Canada West champions were like nothing less than a gold medal. As for Montreal, they've won this championship twice before. They are here almost every year. In fact, this is the 11th time in 14 seasons of youth sports competition that the Carabin have competed at the national championship. They're certainly the underdogs on paper here today, but a contrast in styles, a very stout defensive team in blue against the high-flying octane offense of the UBC Thunderbirds. Rihanna, it should be a great matchup here today. It should be a fantastic matchup, of course. We're going to see some great, hopefully, goal scoring by UBC as well as the Carabans. And a team, UBC number two seed, plus 76 on goals this year. I'm thinking we could be see, potentially seeing a high scoring game, but defensively, we're going to see those Carabans just shutting it down. Starting goaltenders today as the puck is down. We are underway. UBC in the white jerseys with the blue and gold trim. And their starting goaltender today, Elise Hugens, who's been their stalwart between the pipes in the playoffs. Hugens has been terrific this season. She's got a 4-2 record, 1.69 goals against a 9-16 save percentage as the Thunderbirds look to press the issue here in the opening shift. Montreal, meanwhile, their starting goaltender, Ob Racine. A 3-3 mark in the postseason, a 2.72 goals against and a 9.04 save percentage. As the Cataban look to break out of their own zone, pass through the middle, tipped away though, and picked up there by Canada West Rookie of the Year, Jalen Morris, who hammers it in. Now, the Cataban on the counter. Garan from the wall, sends it in front, and that's tipped wide, a chance. Fanned on from the sharp angle and played back to the point now. A shot off a leg, skips over to the near boards. Stepping up there is Jade Picard, but Puck stayed behind and a shot from the line kicked out by Elise Hugens. Her first save of the game as the Thunderbirds play the puck out to center ice. Ryland McKinnon, the captain of the UBC Thunderbirds. Stalwart on defense, but don't expect her to sit back. She has a plenty of offensive ability as well. In comes Roland for Montreal. Juliette Roland turning back in the corner as the Cataban complete a change. Gervais waiting at the point. The puck never arrives, however, and it's forced out to the neutral zone by Mackenzie Cordick. Gervais now trying to get out. Nadeau forced to turn back over across for Gervais, who will play it off the wall and out to Justine Peltier. Into the middle and back. The puck comes to Peltier with a shot into the glove of Elise Hugen. So some good pressure early here for Montreal get a couple shots off, some good saves to get Hugin's confidence up, as well as starting to see a bit of physical play between the two teams. We have talked about this coming down from the PWHL, and it's nice to see in u sport hockey. Montreal head coach Isabel Leclerc talked about that in the uh, tournament opening presser back on Wednesday about the fact that the Canada West and some of the teams out West are bigger and more physical, and so that's something that her team will have to contend with here, coming from the uh, smaller and more skilled RSEQ, one might one might say. As the puck bounces out to center ice, chasing it down there, Madison Weeb on the wing, a shot from the wall, kicked out for save there for Racine in the Montreal goal. Sent around to the near side, and Jay Picard will play it out past Pouliot, right down on goal, however, so play will continue. Montreal taking advantage of that opportunity to make a line change. Quick stretch pass by the Thunderbirds, trying to take advantage, but that skipped over the blade of Ashwin Thorpe. And Montreal starts to move it out. Leila Gagnon through center, weaving towards the line now into the middle, but ran into a sea of Thunderbird defenders. Off the wall, Thorpe will leave it back behind for Jalen Morris. Not just the Canada West Rookie of the Year, but a U Sports All Rookie Team member as well. As Gaskell now leads the rush up the ice for UBC. Sophia Gaskell down into the corner. Pinned along the wall by a trio of Carabin. As the Thunderbirds were in the midst of a change, it's to the line, but McKinnon holds it in. Her shot off a teammate in front there. That's Wong, who cycles it back down below the goal line. Tipped off the boards, but kept in by Annalise Wong, and then she gets 
rudely knocked to the ice for her troubles, but the puck stays in Montreal territory. Circling here is Elliott towards the side of the goal. Sharp angle shot stopped by Oba Rassi. Nice, easy save for her. Ice that puck. Managed to get a change for both teams, which is always good. Fresh legs out there, as we haven't really had any whistles so far in this first period. Just a couple of stops there, but it's always fun to see teams from different conferences that do actually have some familiarity. A lot of players who are in that bronze medal game against each other. It's not the only time these teams have met at Nationals. It's Coaches, both Isabel Leclerc and Graham Thomas kind of joked about that earlier this week, that they always seem to find each other at this tournament. As Kanisha Misswagon tracks back in her own zone. Trying to spin away from the four check there of Gervais. Played to the line, kept in there by Picard. She can't do much with that puck as Bassey now sends it across to the left side for McKinnon. Thunderbirds captain throwing the puck right through the middle. Comes through everyone out the other side and quickly the other way go the caravan. Caran with a feed across to the point. Trying to get a shot on goal, but that is turned aside by the UBC defense. Montreal trying to get it right back in. It's a one on four attack. That doesn't often turn out very well and UBC able to handle that. Send the puck down the ice, this will go for an icing call, 15.42 to play here in the first. We've seen some nice skill plays by Montreal as they kind of are looking more towards dangling in around the zone. Not so much setting up plays quite yet, but getting their hands moving, trying to get around those UBC defenders. It's off to the left of Elise Hugens. Marie Theriot winning it for Montreal. A shot from the point, that hit like Mc, uh, LaPlante who was posted up in front of the UBC net there. That big body defender, Sierra LaPlante, plays him behind the net for her par partner over there. And now the Thunderbirds will get a chance to move it out. LaPlante though, being forced back by Roland. Good tenacious forecheck and Juliette Roland steals it. The centering pass though is broken up. The attack continuing though, in comes Poiré Lehu, trying to throw it in front, in right in the blue paint, but cleared away by LaPlante. Good work early here by this Cataban team, looking to jump on the Thunderbirds in the opening few minutes. Here's Pouliot with a shot, kicked out by Hugens off the rush, and that puck out of play. Just over five minutes in already, we've seen some pretty good action at both ends. Some fantastic shots by Montreal, of course, getting some really nice opportunities. Spending quite a bit of time down in that UBC end. Hugens has been tested a couple times here. Well, for a Montreal team that scored 45 fewer goals, or pardon me, 55 fewer goals than UBC did this season, that's vital, I think, that they play with a lead here in this game. Is they, they maybe not won't have as much explosiveness, and so they can have a little bit of cushion early on here. That could serve them really well. And right now. Peters having trouble getting out of their zone, but now here's Grace Elliott holding up at the line and then just missed Fiala with the pass. Or Ketaban move out of the Montreal zone. Passes through the skates of Pouliot, fired ahead, but behind Wong, and that'll be another icing call here against the T-Birds. Thunderbird's gonna have to almost slow down through the neutral zone a little bit so they can connect those passes with each other because that's a few they've had now go for icing instead of connecting off the stick. And you see head coach Graham Thomas, he's feeling this is his team's time. They have been progressing year to year. They have come close. They've never won the Golden Path Trophy, but it feels like a team that is on the verge of breaking through. But first, they have to break through this quarterfinal round, and that's easier said than done. Tipped out, and here come the Thunderbirds. Wong, along with Fiala, who's driving the net, but Wong fanned on the pass attempt. And that scoring chance goes awry, but here's a shot from the point, blocked in front by Kellyanne Nadeau, second team All-Canadian. And now, a stretch pass up ahead for Laloche. Wakona Laloche with a shot, popped high up in the air, and that will go off the protective netting and bring a stoppage in play. Nice, quick back and forth between both ends. We're seeing great opportunities each way. Of course, UBC still looking to get a couple more shots on goal. They've had some opportunities, but just haven't been able to finish them. UBC, as mentioned, their offense averaging four goals a game during the regular season, but 
Don't overlook what they can do on the back end as well, as they were the second stingiest team in Canada West play as well, giving up just 34 goals in 28 games this season. Only the Alberta Pandas had fewer goals against in the Canada West Conference this year. Up played around on the near side boards, chopped towards the net, bouncing around there in the slot. Hawks over the stick of Roland and scooped up and taken the other way by Mackenzie Kordick. Canada West leading scorer this season with 36 points. And that puck rolling off her stick on that occasion. Kordick trying to get going a little bit though in the playoffs, just one assist in six games for the top scorer in the conference. It's Paré Lehu bust back in for Montreal. McKinnon back there to take the puck away from her, but there's Juliette Roland already showing some real tenacity in the opening seven minutes of this game. Making life difficult for the T-Bird defense. There's another steal by Roland. Gets it across, a shot right for the net. They score! Pinnabin on the board! Milene Lefebvre open the scoring at the 6.58 mark of the first. Beautiful, beautiful tenacity by the Kettabans there. They managed to get the initial shot and put away that rebound. That's what it's going to be. You've got to make sure you've got someone around the net putting in those little rebounds that are going to squeak out of the goalie. And of course, for someone like Hugens, you want to be hopping onto those. Well, it wasn't quite as early as the first goal in the first quarterfinal yesterday. That was just 33 seconds into the contest, but still, Less than seven minutes in here, it is the seven seed Montreal Catabin who have the icebreaker. The goal by Milen Lefebvre. As that puck is sent the length of the ice by UBC. Lefebvre this season, one goal during a regular season play along with two assists. So already matched the regular season total. We saw that yesterday, a big goal from a player you didn't expect in the Waterloo and St. FX game, and again, a bit of an unexpected source of offense here for Montreal to start this off. Thunderbirds now looking to get right back on the equal footing here as Elliott's shot drifts wide. Fiala plays it back down behind the net. Joel Fiala from just outside Saskatoon at Clavette. Just about 10 minutes southeast of the city. Now Montreal is taking a turn to ice. See UBC come out of that goal with a head full of steam as they're attempting, attempting, attempting to get something going for their team here. The face off to the left of the Montreal net. Controlled by the Caravan of the Ford. Plays it around the wall, but it's held in there by McKinnon. Getting right in for a shot. Stop and a quick whistle there as Racine looked to have a little trouble covering that puck, but the referee blowing the play dead before the Thunderbirds could find it. Kind of had a couple extra pokes there on the goalie. She had it, got popped out, and yeah, really quick whistle. Yeah, by the referee she never really had that puck mm -hmm. under control. But you will see that at U Sports, uh, you know, at all levels uh, in the conference play as well, is they'll err on the side of the quick whistle, I think, to protect the goalies a little bit and try to minimize some of that digging and poking and the prodding. So that seemed like just a quick little equipment adjustment, ready to go, and the face-off to her right. 12-15 to play, first period in the Caravan with the 1-0 lead on the goal by Milan Lefebvre. Gervais behind the net. Runs into two Thunderbirds and UBC takes the puck away. They get the cycle working here into the corner. For Fleming, she gets knocked down to the ice. A pass back to the line, intercepted by Etier. And she brings it out to center and sends a puck in deep. Quickly now, back for it, Dumont over skating that puck. And it's played off the wall and out. Back up past Gervais, so icing waved off as the Kettleman have to race back for this. And they do get control of the puck, but you see quickly in there to press the issue. Finally, Peltier finds it. Gets it over to Etsy, who over skates, but there is support. And Duchesneau backhands it into the UBC zone. Just past eight and a half minutes gone in the opening period. 
Good flow here to start this one. A great crowd on hand, a whole mitt full of local students in the building for this one. So a tremendous atmosphere for these two out of town teams. Something like 1,600 kids got out of school today to come watch hockey. Not a bad Friday afternoon. Yeah, I never here got to city. do that when I was in school. Exactly. Come on. Got a whistle. Looks like our first penalty is being called here. A holding signal being made. It's going against Marie Terrio of the Montreal Caravan. So the first power play of the game will go to UBC as they look to get back level here in this opening period. with a pretty productive power play throughout this season. We'll look to capitalize on it here. Yeah, the Thunderbirds power play was great during the regular season at almost 22%, but just one power play goal in their six playoff games on 18 opportunities. Graham Thomas was said not too worried about that. It's a bit of a statistical anomaly, he felt. Here's a one-time blast from Gaskell. That's block before it could reach the net. And the caravan with a chance to clear it out. Yeah, Thomas saying, you know, we pride ourselves on our power play and, and it's always tougher to produce in the playoffs on the power play, but he also said some of those power plays weren't, you know, the full two minute variety either. So the numbers are a little deceiving. McKinnon dishes it off. Now a shot from Bassey stopped by Bob Racine as Shandri Bassey cut inside for a good look. Nice easy textbook save there by Racine we like to see from the goaltender. Get that confidence up. And of course, UBC now five shots on goal. They're kind of closing out that lead that Montreal has. Shannon Bassey, back-to-back 28-point campaigns in regular season play. And she wins the draw. UBC is still a minute and 20 on the power play. Wong gets it back at the point. Cross, Gaskell fakes down low for Bassey. She's well covered. Now Gaskell the shot and Racine with the save. Big screen there, 26. Grace Elliott, six foot one. That's the player you want in front of the net. But fortunately, Racine had good eyes on that puck, was able to see around her, and defense cleaned up that middle for her. She had a little bit better of a view. Face off to her right, just one second past the midway mark here in the first as Gaskell takes control for UBC. Long down for McKinnon. Will now dish it and move to the front of the net, looking to get the tip there as that just drifted wide. It's set up for the Thunderbirds, but no goals thus far. Chipped back in by Wong, and McKinnon slows the clearing attempt to keep it in the zone. Wong now from the top of the circle will leave it for Chanry Bassey. Stick handling her way into the middle around to the other side. A backhander stopped by the wall of blue in front of Obracine and it's pounded down the ice. Both teams make changes in their special team units with 20 seconds to go in the UBC power play. Montreal leading it 1-0. A goal by Milan Lefebvre. Wound around by Jalen Morris. Is the second unit now on here for the Thunderbirds in the late stages. McCallum leaving it for Kordick, who now will defer to Mackenzie McCallum. So off of the circle, a shot. That is blocked by Jade Picard. And the penalty expiring. Terrio out of the box. We're back to five on five. A couple of shots on that power play, but nothing past Racine. As Kordick bounces down to the ice on a heavy collision there. And now a race for the puck. In. A shot from Pori LaHue, stopped by Hugens, and we've got a penalty coming up. And I'm waiting with bated breath, but it is just a penalty. I thought, oh, maybe a slight chance you might see a penalty shot there. You're looking for those arms to go up That's into the right. X for sure, right. but the speed coming down that ice, that foot race, wow. Uh, Pori LaHue put on the afterburners there. Holy smokes, that was fantastic. So it will be Montreal's turn with a power play, but we, well, first, Head to a break. Montreal leading UBC 1-0. You're watching the GFL 2024 U Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy on CBC. Hey, Changemakers. 
change it up. Turn ideas into action. Passion into purpose. And questions into real solutions. Because whatever path you choose, here, you'll make an impact and get ready to change the world. Make your change. Discover your story at Waterloo. Sports is the home of university sports in Canada. Catch the gold medal game of the 2024 GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy this Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific on the CBC Gym, cbcsports.ca, and the CBC Sports app. You're watching U Sports on CBC. Chase the glory as the Montreal Cataban work on their first power play of the game, looking to add to this early lead. Here's a shot from Roland, stopped by Hugens. Ariana, I just want to go back to the play that led to this power play. Amélie poiré lehou showed us some serious speed and also showed why she is leading the Caravan with five goals in the playoffs. Oh, she definitely did. She turned it up. She completely beat down Jalen Morris, who had to then take a hooking penalty off her, but she had an incredible opportunity getting those feet underneath her and just going up the ice so fast. It was fantastic to see. Put it into sixth gear yeah, there. Yeah, no doubt. We'll see if her team can reward her for that hustle here. This power play down to a minute and a half remaining. Here's a chance to cross, pass across, and a shot. I don't think that quite reached the net, but there's roll on in the thick of it again. Nado now at the top of the zone. Takes the shot. Now down for Borela, who was shot through traffic, stopped by Hugens. And right now it is the Caravan who looked like the high-flying offense here in this first period of play. Oh, most definitely do they ever. Of course, they come in as a heavy, good defensive team, but they're just peppering the shots here, especially on this power play, getting some fantastic opportunities. They've got some good hands in there and getting some really nice shots from kind of that uh, face-off circle into the slot. Face-off controlled by the Cataban, Jade Picard. Across to the Losh, gets it back. Now over for Boulang, uh, Boulanger, whose shot is off a leg, skipping over to the boards, but stays in the zone. Picard keeping the play alive. Now leaving it there for Lalosh. Wakona Lalosh now forced to turn against the boards. Gets the puck down into the corner, but Thunderbird's trying to junk it up here a little bit behind the net as they try to kill off this penalty down to 45 seconds. Puck between a whole bunch of skates down there. The referee keeving a close watch on it. I haven't mentioned our officials yet today, but we'll get to that in a moment. Here is Picard. Cruises to the top of the circle. Shot blocked, right back to her. Drifting down low, now taking it in behind the net. At the far side. And now the Cataban looking to get somebody open. Boulanger walking down to the dot. That shot somehow got through. And now Hugens finds it in a maze of bodies. Nice little stand up for the goaltender there by you. Soon she manages to get that puck under control. They're right there saying, nope, we're not going to let you keep digging on this puck. Our officials tonight, by the way, are Brandy Beecroft and Amy Martin, the referees. The Lions people are Melissa Brunn and Laura Gataskis. Wearing the stripes for us today. Just 15 seconds now remain in the Montreal power play. It's 6.45 to go in the first period. And the Thunderbirds are able to clear the zone. Montreal had to wait there to tag up, and Poiré Lahou forced to turn back. The open side, Nadeau sends it in deep, and the Caraban start to change as the power play expires, and the Thunderbirds kill it off. Portic driving down the wing. Now cutting into the middle, a shot stop. There's a big juicy rebound, they score! Cassidy Rhodes finds a loose puck. It ties it up for UBC with 6.15 to go in the first. That nice 
nice original shot coming in, and Cassidy Rhodes gets up that beautiful, beautiful rebound and can just put it away as they found her seat just slightly out of position there. Nice backhand you see on the replay. Not always about how hard you shoot the puck, it's just get it on net, right? And that was a chance there for Rhodes just get that puck to that open goal some way, somehow. And we've got a tie game here in the first. Shots 9-9, the score 1-1, and we're already having a lot of fun here in quarterfinal number three. Thunderbirds buoyed by that equalizer as Bassi now breaks in. Top five in conference scoring last year and this year as well. Consistent point producer, one of several high-powered UBC lineup. Jalen Morris across with the shot from the line from Gaskell that's turned aside. Racing over there, Fleming, but puck ahead of her and it's flipped out and down the ice and a race for it here, Gervais. Leaned on down there, pardon me, that's Gagnon for Montreal. Thunderbirds get the puck back, but it's cut off inside the line by Belanger. Now UBC will move it out. Elliott from inside the red line, softly dumps it in. Back come the Catabank. Picard leading the rush. Across the UBC line, now a drop pass, but that was well read by Fiala. And out come the Thunderbirds, maybe a two on one here. Fiala with Elliott. Well, Fiala shot up high, looking short side. Elliott cycling it back behind the net. As Fiala takes a look over her shoulder, she'll just reverse it once again. McKinnon racing over there, gets there a step ahead of Lalosh. But Picard now gathering the loose puck and just calmly skating right past uh, Fiala, who was picking up her stick back behind the net. Cardin trying to chop it off the wall, and now Belanger helping out, and she gets the one-two with Lalage. Belanger finally muscling it out to center, picked up there by Garan. She couldn't handle that cleanly over the line, and that is offside against Montreal with 4.33 remaining in the first. Got such a quick team with Montreal. They've got some incredibly fast skaters, but they are managing to step up to that physical style of play that UBC is bringing. If they're not backing down from it, I think they are matching them uh, with body contact and physical play here. CBC Sports is the home of University Sports in Canada. Catch the best U Sports women's hockey teams as they face off right here in the GFL 2024 Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy, live from Merlis Belcher Place in Saskatoon. Of course, as you are aware, the action is already underway here on CBC. Waterloo Warriors knocking off St. FX 6-1 yesterday and the Concordia Stingers with a 4-0 win over the host Saskatchewan Huskies. So they're going to meet in one semifinal on Saturday. The winner here today will meet the winner of tonight's quarterfinal between UNB and Toronto as we've got a stoppage here and a penalty coming up to UBC. Ryland McKinnon, some of that physicality, a little bit too much on that occasion and she will head to the box. A little bit too much, of course, if we maybe not get a replay of it, but pretty big body contact hit. Some of it we can let go, but when you have a blatant hit like that one, you got to call it. So good on the refs for keeping that going. Second power play for Montreal. Had some good zone time on the first one, but only one or two shots. As Thunderbirds did a pretty solid job on the kill, and now they'll have to do it again. 3.59 to go in the opening period. 1-1 the score. Glad to have you with us here on a Friday afternoon from Saskatoon. Caravan looking to put their nose back out front. Here's a one-timer from Picard, stopped by Hugens, the rebound off the post. And the Thunderbirds dodge one there and clear the puck. Wow, close call in the opening seconds of the power play. Fantastic opportunity by the Catabat again. Let's see if we can get that puck back down, taking their time in their end to clear it out. But let's see if they can do it again. That was beautiful. It was a real tight angle on that rebound chance, and that might have been the saving grace for UBC. There's a shot kicked out by Hugens, who's been busy here in the opening period. Already nine saves. As the puck stopped behind the Montreal net, still just over a minute left in the five on four advantage for Kona Lalash or Terrio at the line. Just lost the handle for a moment and that 
allow the Thunderbirds to get right up in her grill and clear the puck down the ice. Montreal's power, power play, by the way, I don't even think I mentioned their numbers this season. 12.7% during the regular season, uh, but it's up a tick in the playoffs as Racine has to cover up that puck and gets a little snow shower from Portic. That's never well received. No. That was not nice. I was going to say, is that a trigger point for you? Ooh, big time, big time. <laughs> she is lucky she didn't get called for a penalty on that one. I've seen it happen a few times this season, but oh, that was not nice. Just finishing my thought on that power play. Montreal's power play in the playoffs, 16%. So up a little bit, of course, smaller sample size. Four for 25 during the postseason. And as worth noting, Montreal, the least penalized team in the country this season. So the fact that UBC's already had one power play is uh, somewhat noteworthy. They were only shorthanded 70 times over their 25 regular season games. Fiala with a steal behind the net, now looking to rag that puck as there's still 20 seconds left in the McKinnon minor. Nadeau gaining control and gets it ahead for Amélie poiré lehou Across the UBC line, a shot kicked to the end boards by Hugens. poiré lehou pursuing it down to the end boards. It's dug loose by the Thunderbirds though and played to the open wing for Gaskell. And that will do it for the power play, so Montreal 0 for 2 here in the opening period, but score remains tied at 1. As we're ticked down under 2 minutes now left in the first. Rhodes for Bassey. Henry Bassey looking to get back to Rhodes. Missed her with the pass though, but Roland follows suit. And then Henry Bassey able to get it right back. Wheeling into the slot, a shot. Lots of traffic contact, and we're going to have a goalie interference penalty coming up here against Rhodes, who crashed into Racine in the blue paint. And I always say this, if I can call the penalty up here, it's a pretty obvious penalty. Exactly, and not the case of what UBC wants to be doing is back-to-back -back penalties like this. Could be taking some of it into the second period, but dangerous, dangerous. We saw in that opening last penalty where Montreal had that fantastic opportunity with that sharp angle shot and see if they can do it again and produce here. So Rhodes, the uh, UBC goal scorer, heads to the box. Second year player for UBC. She was a U Sports all rookie team member last year, was Rhodes. As the Catavan go to their third power play here in the late stages of the opening frame. The contact down in the corner as Pelche comes together with Miss Wagon. The puck out front for Lalage's shot stopped by Hugens. Boulanger with the rebound plays it down into the corner. Back up top, Picard winds, fires, and that hit a leg and skips into the corner. Miss Wagon is without her stick, but the play going to the corner where she left it behind, so she's able to retrieve her weapon now. And good for her, because the puck comes to her down there, and now she's trying to glue it to the kick plate down there, maybe get a whistle. No such luck, because it's loose in the corner now, played to Picard, coming to the middle, a shot up high, as that high riser sailed over the bar. 35 seconds left in the period. Laloche forced wide by Fiala. Fan on the shot, the centering pass off a stick, and that will slide out to neutral ice with 25 seconds left in the period. Boulanger didn't get everything on that pass. It does get to Picard, though, who gets it the rest of the way, and now she will make her way off the ice. McKinnon double teamed down low, but support arrives from Wong. Nadeau shouldering her off the puck down there. Six seconds left, the Thunderbirds just want to eat the clock here down along the wall. And it's to the line, but that will do it as time runs out on the opening period. A fast-paced, back-and-forth frame. And fittingly, a tie score after one period of play. 1-1, Montreal open it up. But UBC ties it, and we are tied 1-1 after 20 minutes of play. Well, stick around for their first intermission. This one's just getting started. You are watching the 2024 GFLU Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy here on CBC. Chase the glory.
heart of every girl, there's a dream. Gliding on the ice, scoring the winning goal. Greatness isn't just found in the big leagues. It starts right here in our communities. At these ranks, with these girls. Here's to the dreamers, the believers, and the ones who lace up their skates. Saskatoon Mitsubishi, empowering dreams one stride at a time. Parce que le sport, ça se regarde en direct. Soyez au cœur de l'action avec les web diffusions en direct d'événements sportifs. In the heart of Saskatoon, where the winters are long, hockey is not just a sport, it's a way of life. Behind every team, there's a community that supports them. At Connect Energy, we're proud to be a Saskatoon-based company that powers local businesses with natural gas options to help them thrive. We're excited to sponsor the 2024 GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship. Join us in supporting local businesses and the future of hockey. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Parce que le sport, c'est aussi des parcours inspirants. Un regard unique sur l'humain derrière l'athlète. Exploiter mon potentiel au maximum, c'est un truc de fou. Découvrez les récits numériques et vidéos de Podium sur RadioCanada.ca et sur l'appli Info. Welcome back to U Sports on CBC and our coverage of the GFL 2024 Women's Hockey National Championship presented by Connect Energy in Saskatoon. And after one period of play in this third quarter final, we're all dead even at one between the UBC Thunderbirds and the Montreal Catabans. Well, every year, U Sports celebrates its best student athletes and coaches honoring major accomplishments in each sport. Here are the nominees and winners of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year and U Sports Rookie of the Year awards. The nominees for U Sports Women's Hockey Rookie of the Year are En nomination pour le prix de la recrue de l'année en hockey féminin U Sport 2024. The Sport Universitaire de l'Atlantique from the AUS, Ireland McCloskey, St. Francis Xavier University, Université St. Francis Xavier. Du Réseau du Sport étudiant du Québec from the RCQ, Gabriel Santer, Université Bishops University. Du Sport Universitaire de l'Ontario from the OUA, Abby Lunny, Nipissing University, Université de Nipissing. Et de l'Association West Canadienne from Canada West, Jalen Morris, University of British Columbia. Université de la Colombie-Britannique. La lauréate du prix recrue de l'année en hockey féminin U Sport est The winner of the U Sports Rookie of the Year in Women's Hockey is Gabrielle Santer, Université Bishops University. Here are the nominees for the 2024 Fox 40 U Sports Women's Hockey Coach of the Year Award. Voici les candidats pour le prix de l'entraîneur de l'année Fox 40 U Sports. Des sports universitaires de l'Atlantique, from the AUS, Chris Larad, Université St. Mary's University. Du réseau du sport étudiant du Québec, from the RSEQ, Julie Chu, Université Concordia University. Du sport universitaire de l'Ontario, from the OUA, Katie Mora, Université de Guelph. University of Guelph, et de l'Association West Canadienne, from Canada West, Scott Rivet, Université Mount Royal University. Le ou la lauréate du prix Fox 40 en tant qu'entraîneur de l'année est, the winner of the Fox 40 Coach of the Year Award is, Julie Chu, Université Concordia University. Thunderbirds Montreal Caravan tied at one. You are watching U Sports on CBC. Yeah. 
believe I won. <laughs> oh, that's great to hear. I just love the game and I'm just so thankful. The exchange was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Feel every hit point and celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline. Our passionate team unlocks a world of possibilities with digital broadcasting made simple, bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans. Proudly Canadian, ISI Live, be there. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. U Sports on CBC, presented by the Championnat U Sport à Radio Canada, une présentation du gouvernement du Canada, the government of Canada, Nike, just do it, Fettner, Fox 40, celebrating more than a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program, Pierre Partenaire des Prix de l'Entraîneur de l'Année U Sport, Veraburn, medical supply partner of Varsity Athletics since 1979, Partenaire du Sport Universitaire depuis 1979, Baron. Exclusive supplier of U Sports Championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusive des bagues des championnats U Sport. By Connect Energy, proud presenting partner of this U Sports Championship. Par Connect Energy, fier partenaire de ce championnat U Sport. And by GFL, proud title partner of the 2024 GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship. Par GFL, fier partenaire en titre du championnat de hockey féminin U Sport 2024. Back inside Merlis Belcher places. Our first intermission continues here in Saskatoon. Quarterfinal number three of the GFL U Sports Women's Hockey National Championship presented by Connect Energy here on CBC. Ryan Flaherty, Rihanna Kaminsky with you. Uh, lots of action and excitement in that first period. These teams certainly not dipping their toe in the water whatsoever. No, everybody is coming in hard. They're coming in hot and they are looking to punch their ticket into that semifinal. It looks like a team, couple teams that have seen each other before. Like there is no feeling out process in this matchup, eh? No, they knew exactly what they were up against. Of course, this is a rematch of the bronze medal last year at U Sport Championship. So these two teams are very familiar with one another. Well, it was uh, the, initially it was Montreal who got the scoring started as we had our scoring summary there. Uh, it was a great look there, a rebound chance for Milene Lefebvre. And uh, Montreal's opening the scoring at about just shy of seven minutes in. And then UBC able to tie it up on a rebound uh, goal by Cassidy Rhodes. But really UBC, you know, despite being a real high scoring team, they didn't maybe get quite to their game maybe in that first period. No, you didn't see them get quite as many opportunities as they probably would have liked. Montreal edged them most definitely in that department throughout the first period. They're spending a lot more time down in the UBC end. Uh, so coming into the second, I think that's something they're probably talking about in the room is you can't score goals if you're not giving yourselves opportunities. Something else UBC might be talking about is stay out of the penalty box, right? Oh, so three minors time. in that first period and uh, 
it's hard to score goals when you're killing penalties uh, for six of the uh, first 20 minutes. Exactly, and even if you do have a good penalty kill, how is that power play for the other team doing? They can capitalize on that fairly easily. So adjustments wise, uh, let's let's talk Montreal. I mean, it looks like they're doing what they want to do so far. I don't they want to change much uh, coming into this second period. No, they are playing pretty true to themselves. Of course, they are stepping up to that physical style of play that UBC likes to have and are not backing down. They're getting gritty in the corners with them, which is fantastic to see. They're getting opportunities shooting on net. Their goaltender is standing well. Of course, both teams doing really well with block shots at six apiece, which is nice to see helping out the goaltenders that way. Both these teams uh, really had to battle their way through the postseason. Obviously, UBC comes in as a conference champion, but just like Montreal, they each played back-to-back three-game series to, to get here, essentially. Montreal, of course, lost the RSEQ final, but took the number one ranked Concordia Stingers right to a third and deciding game in that series. And so I think you're seeing a couple teams that really have their playoff armor up and ready to go here big time because I believe that last game against Concordia Stingers they lost something like 10-2. 10-4 I think was the final. Yeah. So they are coming back very hungry that you know you sit with a loss like that for a week or two and you are ready to play when you're getting into your national championship finals here. And for UBC I mean they their head coach Graham Thomas talked about the fact that they you know maybe didn't play their best in the semifinals of Can West where they lost the opening game against the Calgary Dinos and really took them until game three of that series to find their legs and then Alberta also took them to three games and Graham Thomas says he feels that really served them, serves them well he said I don't think you could have scripted a better a better path to the national championship with that little bit of adversity because UBC lost just once in regulation during the regular season so to actually have to really battle their way through the playoffs knowing there was just the one team coming from Ken West besides the host Huskies so um, they've really earned their stripes here and I think now they just have to settle things down a little bit. Maybe just look like Montreal caught them maybe a little bit off guard in the opening few minutes. Especially with all of that speed that Montreal is bringing. They are winning the foot races pretty handedly, uh, which has caused UBC to take a couple penalties off that. So they're going to need to be really careful that way, staying out of the box, uh, watching the speed of these Montreal caravans coming down the ice and maybe matching them a little bit that way. Let's talk quickly about uh, what we saw here on day one of the tournament. The first two quarterfinals, of course, were played here on Thursday. And the opening game, uh, which you and I had the privilege of calling, was the Waterloo Warriors and St. FX Exum in a game that had just one goal in the first two periods and then six in the third, but five of them for Waterloo as they took a close game and turned it into a blowout late, a 6-1 win uh, in a game that certainly didn't reflect that final score. No, it definitely did not. It was so evenly matched for, I would say, probably the first 50 minutes of the game. It was fantastic. Of course, you had Tatum James, who was netting that hat trick when now currently leading the tournament yeah. here in uh, right. points and scoring, which is fantastic. But it was so even for that 50 minutes. And then just Waterloo able to turn it up a little bit and get those five goals in almost that last 10 minutes. And of course, if you weren't watching, two of those were into an empty net as UBC tried to mount a comeback late, but still a real impressive showing by the Waterloo team that really prevented St. FX from really ever getting to its run and gun sort of skate high tempo style uh, holding them to just around 20 shots about half their average per game this season the other quarterfinal we saw was of course in front of a massive crowd here last night the home team Saskatchewan Huskies they had a tall task in front of them facing the number one Concordia Stingers and early on the Huskies really kind of took it to Concordia but their offensive struggles kind of coming to the forefront once again and Concordia just eventually able to wear them down and come away with a 4 nothing win. Unfortunately, I mean, you can't win games if you can't score, right? That's all it comes down to. You can have the best goaltender in the country, which Cameron Drever is definitely up there, but if you're not scoring goals, you're not going to win. That's it. Second team All-Canadian for some reason, even though she was the player of the year in Canada West. But yes, Cam Drever certainly did everything she could for the Huskies, who will now play in the consolation bracket. The nice, uh, I guess, We'll say consolation for them to use that same word as they do still have a chance to finish their season with on a winning note if yeah. they can win their consolation semifinal and then advance to the fifth place game so they'll be playing uh against st fx uh, at 10 a.m local time that's a noon eastern start uh st fx and saskatchewan on saturday the second consolation semi will feature the loser of today's game right now against the loser of tonight's game between unb and toronto and of course the semifinals, we already have one locked in, that's Waterloo against Concordia. 
and uh, that should be a lot of fun. What do you what do you think you're going to see in that one? You and Daniela Ponticelli will be doing that one on Saturday afternoon. It's going to be an exciting game. Both of those teams are so hungry. Of course, Waterloo's going to be hosting next year, so they're happy to be here. I believe it is their first time here, so they have not managed to ever play on a national stage like this, but to get into the quarterfinals like that already, fantastic. It's going to be a really exciting game tomorrow night with them. Make sure you check out the U Sports Championship website to uh, check all the schedule times for those games. Four games coming up tomorrow. First two will be the consolation semifinals. Uh, noon Eastern is the first game, as I mentioned. The second one uh, and then so on and so forth throughout the day. And then the uh, two semifinals coming later in the afternoon and into the evening as we're just getting close to the second period. This isn't the only national championship going on this week. CBC Sports is the home of University Sports in Canada. The best U Sports men's volleyball teams battle for the 2024 U Sports Men's Volleyball Championship from Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario. You can catch the action exclusively on CBC Gem, cbcsports.ca, the CBC Sports app, and CBC Sports YouTube. U Sports on CBC is where it's at as the UBC Thunderbirds return to the ice and now the Kettleman joining them as well as they are cheered on by their support red ref, respective that's the word <laughs> supporters a small but hearty group of Kettleman fans there behind the Montreal bench UBC a little bit larger contingent not a surprise there they didn't have to travel quite as far and they have a couple players from the Saskatoon area on their team as well that they do, of course, Kaylee Pepler, the defender, is a Saskatoon girl, and Joel Fiala from just outside of the city in Quebec, which is about 10 minutes away. A lot of Fialas in the local hockey circles, of course. Evan Fiala was the captain of the men's Huskies team up until a couple of seasons ago. Now teaching here in Saskatoon. So they'll switch ends here, and of course, Montreal still on a power play for the first 32 seconds of this second period. Ryan Flaherty, Rihanna Kaminsky with you. Quarterfinal number three here from Saskatoon as they're ready and raring to go. Who can get back out front here in the second? Buck is down and we're underway in the second period. Nado just played the angle off the boards there as it's sent in deep and that'll kill some precious few seconds remaining on this power play for Montreal. It'll be almost over by the time they get set up as in comes Poiré Lahou with a shot that goes off a stick and out of play. And obviously we saw some jump from Amélie Poiré Lahou in that first period, Rihanna. Oh, did we ever. She won into sixth gear and managed to uh, draw Emily off of her competitor there for hooking. So nice, nice speed we're seeing out of these Montreal cut events. We saw for the right of Elise Hugens, Joel Fiala against Marie Thériault. Thériault wins it. Ten seconds to work with here on the power play. Nadeau lays it down, gets it right back from Roland. Nadeau across. Shot from LaForge, tipped wide. Thériault trying to center, but it's through the skates of Poiré Lahou. And Mc uh, pardon me, that's La Fiala trying to flip it down, but couldn't get it over the defender. Back to five on five here, just into the opening minute of the second period. Cassidy Rhodes busting in with a wrist shot. I think Racine just got a little bit of that with her right pad. Up the boards as a couple players come together and it is swatted out to center ice. And now the Cataban trying to mount an attack, but good tight work on the defensive end by LaPlante. Work that rush. Laid up ahead off the stick of Weeb. Bordick now has that ricochet off her leg as she chases it down into the Montreal zone. Picard with a reversal. And out come the Cataban. Canton ahead for Laloche. A shot from Boulanger off a stick and over the net. Back the line there is Rose Michelle Cardin. Her shot is blocked. Able to keep it in the zone, however. Boulanger now with a steal. Pucks though in her feet, but she's able to kick it back to the line. Fresh D on the ice for Montreal. Chloe Ducheneau just slides it in behind the net. Joanne Grant giving chase. Tied up along the boards there. Stick knocked to the ice out of the hands of Peltier and out with it comes Kordic. Mackenzie Kordic trying to get around the 
defender there, but couldn't get through that line of defense. As Gervais was back to make the play. And now Duchesneau plays it up the wall. This pass Pouliot. Circling back, Gaskell Pouliot, though, right on her back. Elliott trying to swing it up the wall. Duchesneau steps in front of that, but the puck gets passed. And now Fleming trying to get going, but Gagnon slows her down, and the play goes offside at the Montreal line. Some good pressure here by both teams. Neither of them are letting up, of course, in a 1-1 hockey game. Anything can happen here in the second. They're looking for that first goal so someone can pull ahead again. Looks like the ice has shrunk a little bit here to start the second period as the wide open style we saw in a good chunk of that first period. Kind of grinding down a little bit here to start the second. No surprise there. As the teams make adjustments to each other. Slam down the ice, but from the wrong side of center. Natalie icing against the Caravan. 17-17 to go in the second period. down the other way of course the cut of bands a good strong defensive team they're very responsible that way and have been playing really well down their end so far there's a chance off the draw that puck sails high up into the air and down in the corner found first by Wong now Fiala leaving it for McKinnon she gets closed down quickly by Dumont and now the puck out and down to the UBC line back there for it is Gaskell Gaskell, second team Can West All Star this season on the back end as she retreats once more. Running it around and out for the waiting Elliott, who's stopped right outside the UBC line, but McKinnon is there in support. Gaskell will play it to the open side. Wong swinging it to the Montreal line. Terrio's pass in behind Picard, who has to go back. Elliott chasing her, but makes the play around. And it's cleared out of the zone. Played back in by Miss Wagon, but a couple of T-Birds were trapped inside the line. And now Montreal moves it out. Juliette Roland, who had a very active first period in the offensive zone. This time, though, she gets closed down in a hurry by Weeb. The puck back out and down towards the Montreal zone. The car. Over for Cardin, who gets it up ahead to Poiré Lahou. Amélie Poiré Lahou. Shot from the wing off a stick and then hits the glass in behind the net. Now they're jamming away at the side of the goal, but Elise Hugens has it covered. Easy save, man, just to stay glued to that post and not allowing any kind of wraparounds, things like that. We saw quite a few yesterday by, in the evening game, no success though. So interesting to see Montreal give it a little bit of a try here. 4.05 gone in the first, or second, pardon me. Another face off in the UBC zone to the right of Elise Hugens and Jacqueline Fleming tossed from the dot and Cataman win it, shot from the point, swallowed up by Hugens. Just line it up and do it again. You know, if hockey games went four seconds at a time, it would take a long time to play. <laughs> It'd be like baseball. <laughs> Face off once again, one by Montreal, is shot just drifting wide. Duchesneau stepping up, but the puck gets past her, and now Mia Baird in hot pursuit. Back there is Gervais, makes the play to Nadeau, but puck kept in by Laplante, that shot hit the post. Racine never saw it, there was a screen in front from her own player, and the Thunderbirds come within an inch or two of taking the lead. Post to piece now. Got a goal apiece and a post apiece in this contest. Shots now 12-10 in favor of Montreal. In comes Boulanger. She gets stopped by a pair of defenders. Puck bouncing around. Joanny Garand trying to control it. Now having some difficulty. Just trying to get back to the Montreal bench. And now away comes Morris. Jalen Morris knocked off the puck. Following up is Buckley, but it is swept to the far side. Racing over to keep it in though, Ashton Thorpe. Who hammers the puck off the glass and in deep. Ralosh tipping it ahead. Gagnon couldn't control and Elliott circles at center. Grace Elliott playing it in deep. Both teams completing a change. Elliott trying to track it down behind the Montreal net but smoothly skating it out is Callahan LaForge. 
She gets to the UBC line and dumps it in. Miss Wagon back there, trying to play it to herself off the corner boards, but now a couple of extra Ketabang arrive on the scene. McKinnon pulls the puck out of the pile. Ryland McKinnon weaving through the neutral zone across the Montreal line. There's a shot up high and a glove save by Racine. Nice textbook save, able to slow the play down a little bit. We're seeing a lot of back and forth, but not a lot of great opportunities so far besides that one post UBC managed to hit. Has settled in a little bit here in the second. Ryland McKinnon, of course, the UBC captain there with that last shot. Not only a second team All-Canadian, first team Canada West All-Star this year, but also the only U Sports player who had the privilege of taking part in a Hockey Canada camp back in September that included the entire national team and a really great development for her as uh, might be hearing her name down the line in the professional ranks or maybe in the national program at some point. Let's see her in that red and white jersey. Played up the wall, McKinnon right there, reading the play well. Tied up there, McCallum along with Terrio and Terrio trying to chase it down, but it's Amelie poiré Lahou stopping, sending it into the blue, into the slot, but that was a tough pass to handle for Roland. Montreal still on it. Here's Gervais with a shot wide. Comes around to Terrio in the far corner. She'll just cyclic back down, nearly popped off the stanchion and out front, but back to the line for Nadeau. Kellyanne Nadeau. Her pass neatly picked off by Mackenzie McCallum and the former McGill Martlett. Gets it out to center, but now back in comes Montreal. Roland, left wing feed, back to the middle, chip towards the goal just wide. Nadeau with that chance for Montreal. Now has it again, trying to spin it into the slot. Boulanger rips it just wide of the net. That one had some steam on it. Nadeau now looking down low, trying to connect with Garam, but that rattles off her feet, and the Thunderbirds relieve the pressure. This top line here for Montreal has really been, well, I guess technically they're the second line, but they've played like the top line here today for Montreal. Trio of Terry Roland and Poiré Lahou, and now out with it comes Wakona Lalash. Gets a shot through feet, that's kicked out by Huggins. Played the line, knocked down by Boulanger. Hope forward, and now Lapointe over there for the Thunderbirds, but she gets shut down by Joanny Garin. It looks like both teams would be content to take a whistle here, but now Montreal digs it loose. Garin down to the corner. Bumping down there with a couple of Thunderbirds. Laplante trying to dig the puck loose. Carrier in a battle there. And it comes back to the point. Once again kept in. Picard wrist shot. That missed the target. Nobody can find it as it bounced up high and now comes down along the near wall. Rhodes able to clear the zone, but her pass is Knocked down in the center of the ice by Cardin. Up ahead for Kordic. Gets it into the Montreal zone, but not deep. And there was a brief chance there for the Caravan to counter, but they will ice the puck instead. 11.33 to play in the second. Some fantastic opportunities there for the Caravan. Of course, you want to get those on net, not be shooting them wide, but oh, exciting, exciting. Nice, nice shots from the slot. CBC Sports is the home of University Sports in Canada. Catch the best U Sports men's hockey teams as they face off in the University Cup out in Toronto. The TMU Bold are hosting that one. And of course, the action is already underway on CBC. Quarterfinal day two for that tournament as well as the shot is stopped by Ulb Racine. Shots now 12 apiece. Very even game on pretty much every category here so far, and the score reflects that. Low shots so far here in the second period. Not a ton of opportunities on net. Thunderbirds averaged over 35 and a half per game in the shots department this season. Montreal playing a pretty stout defensive game thus far. Here's a shot from Gagnon and an easy glove stop for Achilles Hugens and a little collision there at the whistle, knocking Jalen Morris down and just a little word of warning from her teammates to the offending Montreal player, just Team Peltier. 
Marco Fowler we're seeing good physical play from both teams. They're getting gritty in those corners, especially along those boards. We're having some really hard fall battles. Birds control the draw. Played around for Wong. Up ahead to the line. Nice play to Elliott. Breaking in. Grace Elliott shoots. Stopped by Racine, but a penalty coming up as Hugens races to the bench, but the Ketaman touched the puck, so we'll get the whistle and the call. It is a penalty shot. I wondered there, Elliot had a step as the referee held for dramatic effect and pointed to center. Some folks call it the most exciting play in hockey and we're gonna have one right here in a 1-1 game. Oh, Nadeau shaking her head. She went right to the penalty box. Didn't even realize it was going to be a penalty shot. So we'll see what Grace Elliott can do. I believe there he came down to a shootout when UBC was here playing the Huskies, but she was not one of the shooters, if I remember correctly. UBC's second leading goal scorer this season is Grace Elliott, and in she comes one-on-one -on -one with Racine. Elliott stops, shoots, saved by Racine, who then gives her a little bump on the way by as it gets a little salty here in the second. And Racine coming up large to keep this one tied at one. Yeah, Elliot got a little bit close there as she uh, definitely could have stopped a few feet shy of the crease. But uh, yeah, Racine stood up for herself. Let her know, uh, 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 I'm not gonna let you walk all over me here. Well, you make the save, that's the big statement. Yep. And then, yep, clean it up as well. So we stay tied as Elliot unable to convert on that penalty shot chance. And as we approach the midway mark here in the second period, just under 11 minutes to play. 1-1 the score, Lalash shrugged off the puck there. It's played up the wall and LaPlante at the near point. Across, shot from the line from Gaskell doesn't reach the net. Swung down behind the goal once again. Back there for it is Gervais, or pardon me, Ducheno. Backhander kept in once again as UBC redoubles their efforts midway through this second period. And a glorious opportunity to take the lead, but Obracine said no. Here's a sharp angle shot wide from Fiala. Kept in by Gaskell, makes a nifty move at the line. A slapper just off the uh, tip of the glove and over the net. And finally, the Caravan get it out. Lalosh across for Garan. Joanne Garan will get the puck in deep and make her way to the Montreal bench. UBC with a little bit extra space to move. Pass was away from Fiala though, and icing waved off. Fortunately for the Thunderbirds, Nadeau picking up the loose puck now as she will wheel back. Looking for Gervais, one-handed up the wall, trying to connect with Roland, who now moves it up the ice. Juliette Roland, fishing over Barre Lahou with a shot, and that's deflected high and out of play. Media timeout here in the second period. The UBC Thunderbirds came close to taking the lead, but it remains 1-1 between Montreal and UBC. You're watching the GFL 2024 U Sports National Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy on CBC.
CBC Sports is the home of University Sports in Canada. The best U Sports women's volleyball teams are in Hamilton. This week for the 2024 U Sports Women's Volleyball Championship, the action is underway with the quarterfinals and the matchups include St. Mary's at Manitoba, Montreal against Alberta McMaster, taking on UBC and Acadia versus Brock. Catch the action exclusively on CBC Gem, cbcsports.ca, the CBC Sports app, and CBC Sports YouTube. New sports on CBC, chase the glory. Back underway here in the second period, Ryan Flaherty, Rihanna Kaminsky with you. The UBC Thunderbirds and Montreal Caravan nodded at one midway through the second. Paré Lahou's dump in doesn't get as deep as she would have liked in that. Is, uh, is that a glove pass or an offside? It is a hand passed call just outside the UBC line. Both goals coming back in the first period. It was Milen and Lefebvre opening things up for Montreal and Cassidy Rhodes with the equalizer for UBC. Shots now 13-12 Montreal. Not a lot of rubber at the goals here thus far in the second, but here's a chance and a shot right on from Weeb and a glove stop by Rassi. Nice easy save, keeps her confidence up, keeps her head in the game. Of course, as a goaltender, when you're not getting many shots, it's easy to get out of your groove, but to take some always keeps you in. Of course, she did just face a penalty shot if you're just joining us or maybe you stepped away. Racine staring down Grace Elliott just a couple of moments ago to keep this game tied. Gaskell playing it down the boards. Take cut off there, and now the Ketaman get it out. Laloche swinging it wide. Skating onto it there, Boulanger. It's played down into the UBC zone. Gaskell, though, first to it for the Thunderbirds. Hordick across to Rhodes, who had to slow up just a moment, didn't take that in stride. And her shot from the line is gloved and held by Obrasin. Again, just another nice, easy glove save. Goalies so far this weekend making those look so beautiful. Cam Reaver had quite a few yesterday. And as does Hugens today. For you to see. Obrasin, uh, 1.96 goals against during the regular season. That was third best in the RSEQ. Year with the Kettleman, one of their veterans. As the Thunderbirds work along the boards in the Ozone. Bassey shielded away from the puck. Rubs her check out along the end boards, but Montreal comes away with it. Duchino through the middle of the ice, just out of the reach. Look for Lorianne. He couldn't reach that pass, and it'll be icing against Montreal. A little bit of a slower second period here. Not quite the fire and intensity that we were seeing through the first between these two teams. Well, you wonder too, you get here, you're all fired up to go for your first game at Nationals and you've had, especially in the KCUBC, a little extra time off. And uh, yeah, you're right. Things have settled in really here in the second. It's become a little bit more of a chess match, although there is a great tip play and a save by Racine. Well positioned that time to kick that out. McKinnon, and that's something that the UBC pride themselves on is that their offense, in their words, can come from anywhere. Any player, any spot on the ice. And that was a good example right there. Elliott, back into the Montreal zone, left the puck behind with ATA doing the work there. But now here's Elliott trying to barge out front, and a shot fanned on by Fiala. That was in her feet, tough for her to get that on the stick. Good looking opportunity goes by the wayside there for UBC. Played back down to the Thunderbird zone. Kanisha Miswagon winding it up through center ice as she finds some open space along the far side. Miswagon shot doesn't get through as it's blocked by LaForge. Kelly on LaForge now behind her own net, bringing it out. 
Montreal looking to get work on the offense here as Thunderbird slowly starting to take over the puck possession here in the second. Fleming to the right wing. Bassey, her pass off the skate of McCallum, the backhand kicked out by Racine. She had to contend with another Thunderbird forward cruising past. And LaForge now moves it ahead. Two on two rush here for Montreal. Gagnon forced wide, now plays it back to the line for Chloe Ducheneau. He retreats to the boards, now sends it towards the net, but a trio of Thunderbirds blocking that entry point. Ducheneau heads back. Up for Juliette Roland. Back in the UBC zone, dishing it off to Poiré Lahou. Curling in the corner is Amélie Poiré Lahou. Chopping it towards the goal, Roland in a battle with LaPlante. Gets it back to Poiré Lahou. Terrio waiting for it in the slot. Here it comes as she dishes back. Shot from Picard. Blocked by Fiala. Picard holds it in though. Now she gets it down to Roland who couldn't control that aerial pass and now it's banked off the glass and out. Five and a half to play in the second. Back in comes Picard. Poiré Lahou shot off a body and high into the corner. Elliott takes a look. Delivers the pass up ahead but stepping in front of that is Audrey, Audrey Gervais. She's knocked to the ice in the UBC. Going back to the box here, Annalise Wong called for holding. And the Caravan will go to the power play. With those speedy Montreal players, I think that's the second time they've had a penalty drawn on them as they're coming through so quickly. Fourth power play of the game for Montreal. 0 for 3 thus far. As Kanisha Miswagen gives a fist bump to her goaltender, Elise Hugens, as to reassure her that they're going to kill this one off. She comes with 5.15 to play in the second. 1 1 game. Picard. Montreal's been really good on the faceoffs here on the power play today. Lalash, a high shot fought off by Hugens. The puck trickling around in the slot and finally forced out by Baird. Roland. Working at her, pardon me, Picard working back in. Gives it off to Peltier and now across where we go to Lalash. Back to the line, Picard shot just wide. A chance off the end boards for Lalash, but Dugan is able to find that puck in the forest of bodies. You can see players quick to get in front of that goaltender to prevent any uh, little bit of pushing, a little bit of digging for that puck, hoping to get it loose. You know, refs have been pretty quick on the whistle, but still we saw earlier in the first period Racine not quite able to hang on to the puck and she was very very fortunate that there was a quick reference still a minute and a half left in the power play and they'll have to drop this again there was an issue there it looked like one of the montreal players was cheating so terrio is going to get waved out roland will now take the draw against jacqueline fleming and still some issues with the alignment here <laughs> Lines open out far on the far side with some final instructions, and now they drop it in. McKinnon collides in the corner with Terriot. Now Marie Terriot just kind of set a pick there down for Roland. Played high off the glass and out. With four and a half minutes left in the second period. 1 1 the score. Both goals back in the first. Montreal working on their fourth power play of the day. Amélie Poiré-Lahou, busting down the right wing, now turning back as the Catamana set it up. Drifting into the middle of the ice, McKinnon staying right with her as she hands it off to Nadeau. After Poiré-Lahou towards the net, but that doesn't reach the goal, but the clearing pass is broken up. Roland, back to the line, Nadeau was shot, tipped into the corner. With too much stick on that deflection from Terrio. This wagon leans on Roland behind the net. Gets the puck to the near boards, but Nadeau pinching in, and she gets knocked down from behind by Kordic. That time, Mackenzie Kordic had just enough on that contact to make the play without taking a penalty. Catamat trying to catch UBC on a change. Nadeau takes the quick up pass and plays it into the corner. 15 seconds left in the power play. Picard. Stick knocked out of her hands. Fiala loses hers as well. Delay penalty coming up to Joel Fiala. Presumably a slash coming up here on that stick play as now UBC touches up and we'll get the call. 
And yes, it is the slashing signal from the official in the neutral zone who was watching that play closely. And Thunderbirds back to the box again. They'll have one second of five on three. So really not, not a significant two player advantage, but still this UBC Thunderbirds have done a good job for most of this period staying out of the box. Now it's kind of coming back here. Now the fifth trip here in this contest. Yeah, back to back penalties again. We saw that in the first period with them and we're seeing it again. And you know, even with that one second, it gives Montreal a good opportunity because Wong is gonna have to just speed her way into the zone. Scrambled off the draw and here comes Annalise Wong out of the box. They might have had a chance to spring her there as they got possession of the puck, but McCallum doing the, making the smart play there, just get that puck down the ice. So back to a five on four now for Montreal. Three minutes remaining in the second. Can't get into the zone cleanly that time. And Gaskell will force them to take it 200 feet. Both teams getting their personnel arranged accordingly. And now out with it comes LaForge. Kalyan LaForge stepping on a stick there and going down. And the Thunderbirds send it the length of the ice once again. Annalise Wong now calling for a change as McKinnon hops over the boards for UBC. 110 remaining in the Montreal power play. Up with it, Jade Picard. RSEQ Rookie of the Year a season ago as the backhander right on stopped by Hugens. A little bit better of an opportunity for the Catavans getting a face off down into the offensive zone. They still have a minute left in that power play to try to capitalize on something. Unfortunately, so far tonight, for this afternoon, I guess, they haven't been able to do anything on the power play, but again, a minute left to give it a try. Face off controlled by Montreal as they've had the edge in that department here today. Picard plays it to the half wall. Boulanger behind the net there for Peltier. And back to Jessica Boulanger. Now played past her by McKinnon and the smooth skating Thunderbird captain just able to get it out over the line and drop back in offside by Picard. As now McKinnon slowly working her way out of the Montreal maze there. <laughs> Exchanging a few pleasantries along the way, I'm sure. Yeah. My mom makes better cookies than yours. <laughs> so 150 left here in the second. Montreal still with half a minute remaining on this five on four advantage. Losh squashed to the ice by Wong and Puck cleared down the ice by UBC. Just one last rush here on this power play as we get closer to the final minute of the period. Picard, he's logged a lot of ice time here to the first two. Up ahead, tripped up on the play. Another UBC penalty coming up as the Montreal captain Boulanger was taken down, getting into the zone. It'll be a two second five on three now. <laughs> just ticking up one second at a time, but UBC just making a regular trip to the box here in the late stages of this second period. And of course, Fiala already on her feet. She is again looking to just zoom into that zone as soon as that two seconds is up in her penalty. 117 remaining in the period, but Montreal spending a lot of time down at the UBC end here in the last few minutes. Still, though, I haven't really seen a lot of dangerous looks on this power, this sequence of power plays, though, have we? No, we really haven't. Uh, so hopefully, you know, Montreal can have some type of a game changer here, get some momentum shift is really what they're looking for. So they can, you know, tip the scales a little bit. Because as much time as UBC is spending in the box, I would say the second period has almost belonged a little bit more to them. Certainly in even strength, they've had the bulk of the puck on their sticks. Is Get the puck into the corner off the draw the tripping call. Here's Mackenzie McCallum in the box for UBC. Mentioned it briefly earlier, a transfer of four years at McGill. In fact, played against UBC at Nationals two years ago uh, for McGill, but now in her Masters and back in BC where she did play in Kelowna as a U18 
many years ago. Not that many, I guess. McKinnon with his shot, clubbed down by Racine. She hit the final half minute of the period. Terrio with a touch pass for Corey Lahou, but a great back check by McKinnon, just getting the stick in there to clear the puck out. LaForge leaves it at the line for Bore Lahou. Firing it across the ice. Nadeau from the line. Down low. Here's a chance in front. Bore Lahou off the bar. Oh, second bit of iron that the Montreal Caravan have found here in this contest. And it was that close to taking the lead in the final seconds of the period. But the buzzer sounds and we remain tied at one. Oh, so close, Sammy Lee, Poire Lahou, to put in Montreal in front, two to one. Oh, what an incredible replay there. That shot right off the crossbar, just an inch maybe lower, and we'd be going into a bit of a different break post-second period here. However, we are still tied at one after two periods of play here in this quarterfinal matchup. 2024 GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy on a CBC live from Merlis Place, Merlis Belcher Place in Saskatoon. It's that moment again, the one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire, le cheminement de la réussite, of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais, quand toutes les chances sont contre toi, when you can't push one more second, chase the glory. Viseo. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. The exchange was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> to inspire and impact the climate. Sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visit the shop.usports.ca to profit of the promotion of the week of the collection Nike Team. Welcome back to U Sports on CBC and our coverage of the GFL 2024 U Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy for two periods of play. We've got a good one going. The Montreal Catamaran and UBC Thunderbirds are tied at one. Every year, U Sports presents a series of major honors to the top student athletes in each sport. Here are the 2024 U Sports Hockey Community Service Award nominees and winners of the 2024 U Sports Player of the Year Award. The nominees for the Marion Hillard Award to the student who excels in hockey, academics, and community involvement are Les candidats pour le prix Marion Hillard pour l'excellence dans le hockey, les études et l'engagement communautaire sont 
des sports universitaires de l'Atlantique, from the AUS, Shailen McFarlane, University of Prince Edward Island, Université de l'Île du Prince Edward, du Réseau du Sport étudiant du Québec, from the RSEQ, Amy Fecto, Université Concordia University, du Sport universitaire de l'Ontario, from the OUA, Emily Baxter, Toronto Metropolitan University, Université Métropolitaine de Toronto, et de l'Association West Canadienne, from Canada West, Jenna Merck, University of Regina, Université de Regina. La lauréate du prix Marion Hillard pour l'engagement communautaire est The winner of the Marion Hillard Award for Community Service is Emmy Fecto, Université Concordia University. The nominees for the Broderick Trophy as the U Sports Outstanding Women's Hockey Player of the Year are En nomination pour le trophée Broderick comme athlète de l'année U Sport en hockey féminin, des sports universitaires de l'Atlantique, from the AUS, Lillian George, University of New Brunswick, Université de la Nouveau-Brunswick, du réseau du sport étudiant du Québec, from the RCQ, Gabrielle Santer, Université Bishops University, du sport universitaire de l'Ontario, from the OUA, Katie Chomiak. Nipissing University, Université de Nipissing, et de l'Association West Canadienne, from Canada West, Cameron Drever, University of Saskatchewan, Université de la Saskatchewan. La lauréate du trophée Broderick décerné à la joueuse de l'année en hockey féminin U-Sport est The winner of the Broderick Trophy as the U-Sports Player of the Year in Women's Hockey is Gabrielle Santer, Université Bishops University. FNPA and Indigenous communities are working together to develop a cleaner energy workforce, which is crucial to achieving a net zero energy future by 2050. Meaningful Indigenous engagement and consultation are essential for this goal to be realized. The vision is to pursue energy sovereignty by expanding wind, solar, energy storage, and new nuclear technologies across Canada. Collaboration and collective efforts are necessary to decarbonize our economy particularly in regions such as Alberta and Saskatchewan. Become a valued general or industry member and join us in this important work today. FNPA, the pathway to powerful opportunities. of winning behind us, that means a lot of winning numbers. Numbers like over 1,200 organizations funded and 12,000 groups supported. Winning numbers like 6 million given away annually in community grants. Winning numbers like 196 athletes sent to Olympic and Paralympic Games. And the winningest number of all, the $1.4 billion given back through sport, culture, and recreation. And we're just getting started. <laughs> Can you tell us your experience with online bullying? When I was younger, the girls started to pick on me. I felt really alone because I just had no one to talk to. We have a little surprise for you. I've always been drawn to Narissa for her calm, cool energy. She's kind, she's compassionate. I hope that one day I can be half the woman that Narissa is today. That's really meaningful to me. <laughs> your words have impact. Be kind online. 
At Viterra, we believe in the power of connection. Our world-leading agriculture network connects producers and consumers to supply top quality food ingredients each and every day. Our team takes great pride in working closely with farmers to help feed the world. It's something we've been doing for over 100 years. And as an industry leader, we're dedicated to playing a critical role in meeting the needs of a growing world. Because together, we're stronger and achieve more. Parce que le sport, c'est bien plus que des résultats. C'est aussi des analyses et des dossiers qui nous plongent au cœur de l'univers complexe et en mutation. C'est vraiment incroyable. Suivez les actualités sportives sur RadioCanada.ca et sur l'appli Info. U Sports on CBC, presented by Les Championnats U Sport à Radio Canada. Une présentation du gouvernement du Canada, the Government of Canada. Nike, just do it. Fettner. Fox 40, celebrating more than a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program. Pierre, partenaire des prix de l'entraîneur de l'année U Sport. Veraburn, medical supply partner of Varsity Athletics since 1979. Partenaire du sport universitaire depuis 1979. Baron, exclusive supplier of U Sports Championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusive des bagues des championnats U Sport. By Connect Energy, proud presenting partner of this U Sports Championship. Par Connect Energy, fier partenaire de ce championnat U Sport. And by GFL, proud title partner of the 2024 GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship. Par GFL, fier partenaire en titre du championnat de hockey féminin U Sport 2024. Second intermission continuing here in Merlis Belcher Place in his quarterfinal number three at the 2024 GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy. Ryan Flaherty, Rihanna Kaminsky with you. Uh, no scoring in that second period as we show you the scoring summary so far. Both the goals here in this contest coming back in the first period. It was Montreal's Milan Lefebvre opening it up at the 6.58 mark. Uh, to give Montreal the early lead, but UBC answering back at 13.45 in the first, a goal by Cassidy Rhodes, uh, her second of the postseason. And that tied it up, but no goals in the second period. The shot 16-15 in favor of UBC. And Brianna, we've seen Montreal spend a pretty healthy amount of time on the power play so far, but they have not been able to break through yet. How much of a factor do you think that could play as we head to the third here? A big factor. I mean, they've had five opportunities, and a couple of them, uh, they had a few seconds of five on three plays. So you have that UBC player that's rushing down into the game, and five, five so far, and they haven't been able to capitalize even on a couple of those opportunities. They spent more time picking up the puck that was getting iced into their own end. Uh, I would say coming out of the second period, the best opportunity that was had either way, either that shot off the end where it hit the uh, crossbar for Montreal or Grace Elliott's penalty shot, which was an exciting moment here this afternoon. Yeah, absolutely. It's not every day you get a penalty shot in a national championship tournament, but Ob Racine coming up with the stop there. That would have given UBC the lead, but we are still tied at one. So the Thunderbirds obviously have the... Uh, they come in with the, the, the label of the high-powered offensive team, Montreal, the kind of shut-down defensive unit. But really, the way this first two periods has gone, you wouldn't necessarily know that by watching these two teams here today. Not at all with the way that they've been able to both match each other playing style. Of course, UBC is skating a little bit quicker, much like Montreal likes to do. We saw lots of speed out of them. But then you have UBC, who is a pretty heavy physical team and Montreal is able to match them in the physicality of this game. You know, they're getting greedy in the corners, along the boards, they're having some fantastic battles that is exciting to watch, especially we had 1,600 students in the building to check out this afternoon game here at Belcher. And 
it's really evenly matched so far. No team has kind of pushed ahead. The only stat that is noticeable difference is face-offs one, where Montreal has won 29 compared to UBC 16. Yeah, and especially in the O zone, they, when they've been on those power plays, they seem to be able to control the puck and set up. But haven't, as you mentioned, been able to break through. And speaking of breaking through, for UBC, they had, you know, at five on five, a healthy amount of puck possession in that second period. And that's yeah. something that they pride themselves on as being a possession dominant team. They also feel that they can score in bunches. And so right now, they just quite haven't found that, that gear where they're clicking in the offensive zone as consistently as, I, as consistently as I think they would like. So what do you think they need to do to maybe adjust and try to find a way through this stout Montreal defense? Ooh, that's our just more quality shots because either way, we're not getting really quality chances. They are getting some shots on net. It is pretty low, 15 to 16, so really not that many. They just have to keep shooting, get in there for those rebounds. We saw that's how that uh, second goal tonight, this afternoon, sorry, was scored by UBC. It was that uh, initial save and then able to get in and get that goal scored. But we're going to need to be seeing a little bit more of that, just in general, more shots on net. Yeah, really, really maybe the only blemish for Racine today is that rebound that she kicked out that led yeah. to the UBC goal because both goaltenders have played very, very well here today despite the somewhat low shot tally. They've certainly stood in. And of course, we've seen a couple of posts as well. Montreal's had a pair, and UBC had one in that second period also. So it should be really interesting to see who can break through here in the third. Of course, as we should mention, since we are in a tie game heading to the third, uh, we haven't had any OT yet in this tournament. As, uh, but in case we do today, uh, so folks know the format, uh, because it's different from the men's championship, the U Cup, they play continuous overtime. But here in the Women's National Championship, it is a 10 period, 10 minute, excuse me, four on four, 10 period. Yeah, S settle in folks. You're gonna be here till tomorrow. <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh my goodness, they couldn't pay me enough. Uh, four, uh, four on four, 10 minute overtime. And if that is not does not solve it, then we will go to a shootout. So uh, keep that in mind as we head to this third period. Uh, yeah, so. Folks who are maybe hoping for a marathon or two. I, there's some sickos like me that sometimes just can't get enough of a game that never ends. But uh, you don't get that here at uh, Women's Nationals, and that's probably for the better. But, I mean, shootouts can go on for quite some <laughs> time, true. too. I've seen six, seven, ten shooters come through. Earlier this year, UBC, when they played the Huskies here at Belcher, they went to, I think, six or seven yeah. at one point. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it will be interesting to see if that becomes a, a factor here as this one progresses, of course, neither of these teams want to take it that far. They would like to get out of here and something else to or keep in mind, of course, the teams playing today have the shorter turnaround going into the second round, whether they're playing in the, con in the, the main brass side of the bracket or the consolation side. There's a bit of an edge for the teams that played their quarterfinal on Thursday. They get an extra day of rest. So, you know, Montreal and UBC would like to do everything they can to avoid having to play more than 60 minutes of hockey uh, here this afternoon. Teams are just returning uh, to the ice or about to return to the ice. And don't forget that CBC Sports is, of course, the home of University Sports in Canada. The best U Sports men's volleyball teams are battling for the 2024 U Sports men's volleyball title from Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario. You can catch the action exclusively on CBC Gems, CBC Sports.ca, the CBC Sports app, and CBC Sports YouTube. U Sports on CBC. Chase the glory. Teams are back out. Moments away from the third period and talking about those Montreal power plays. They will have 43 seconds on their sixth power play of the game left here to start this third period. I think if you're UBC, you can maybe be uh, forgiven for feeling a little bit Jinsey on a couple of those calls. It's like, I think maybe they're, they may have got the raw, raw end of the deal on a couple of these penalties here in the second, but either way, once they're called, you got to kill them. Exactly. Montreal hoping it's still 43 seconds to capitalize on this uh, most recent power play they have. Terrio and Fiala ready to go at the center ice dots. And we're back underway here. Ryan Flaherty, Rihanna Kaminsky with you. Quarter final number three from Merlis Belcher Place. Happy to have you with us here on a Friday afternoon from wherever you may be watching. 
Bienvenue and salut to our friends out in Quebec. And those in BC, and there's I'm sure some Francophones there as well. <laughs> Fiala now doing work on the kill here, trying to bleed the rest of this penalty time down. Wong in the far corner now. Shut down there by Roland, but mission accomplished for UBC. The penalty down under 10 seconds now, and the Cataban haven't been able to get it into the Thunderbird zone yet. And fired in by Poirela, who as Racine slams the paddle to let her team know the penalty is expiring and out of the box. Speeds McCallum first to the puck behind the Montreal net, throws it in front, tip, and a stop by Racine. As Fleming was looking for a greasy one there. A little bit of a dangerous play. Back to five on five. Now in comes Joanny Garan. Garan with a shot. Score! <laughs> Top corner short side of the Cataban are back in front 2-1. Pop that water bottle up and off in that top shelf. Not a power play goal, but just a few seconds after the power play goal, or the power play expired, and Montreal back in front here, just 68 seconds into the third. Short side, glove side. You don't see too many going in that way. What a beautiful, beautiful goal for Garan. Been watching Joanne Garan this afternoon, and she, at times she looks like she's having a little trouble getting around up and down the ice. I don't know if she's dealing with any sort of a little injury, but didn't look like it there as she Ooh. sped down the wing and fired a beauty past Elise Hugens. And for the second time today, the Caravans have a one goal lead. Garan this season, six goals, eight assists during regular season play. And gets the Caravan back in front here in the third. T-Bird's looking to get right back Level is sent down wide of the goal line, Miss Wagon. Viala tied up below the goal line. Wong cycles it back down to the Clavet product. Viala back to the line. McKinnon will send it across to Kenesha. Miss Wagon doesn't have a lane. Lays it off the end boards. Viala wanted to wrap it around, but it slipped off her stick. McKinnon a shot from the line. There's a pile up in the crease. And now the whistle blows as Elliott, I think we're going to have matching penalties here. Elliott down there for UBC, and that looks like Rose Michelle Cardin, but I think Elliott, no, oh, now Cardin, who was trying to play innocent there, <laughs> go off the ice, will get guided to the box. I did see her throw a little fist of cuffs there as she was down on the ice. It kind of looked like Elliott came down and just held each other there. You know, they're just hugging, they're just getting along, you know? Yeah. A little bit of love taps back and forth. <laughs> so, Cardin and Elliot off to the box. And I believe we will stay five on five here. As that, those calls come at the 2.03 mark of the third. Montreal trying to turn this into an unofficial timeout. And it looks like Montreal got called for a second infraction. So. Juliette Roland headed to the box. It will be a UBC power play, and I didn't see the signal on the second call, so oh. forgive me for missing that, but UBC getting a chance to tie it up here on a, their second power play of the game. So we'll have to wait for the announcements are in-house here. Try to keep an ear open for the PA announcer. Let us know that penalty is... UBC goes to work on the power play for the second time today. Gaskell fakes the shot, now delivers the pass to Bassey. Back for Sophia Gaskell. Across to Wong. Now McKinnon circling into the high slot. Shot off the body and wide. As there was a lot of traffic in front of the crease there. And the puck didn't get through. Kept it in the near point. Sent it to the corner. It's a four minute penalty for head contact. And that's why the extra player in the box and the power play, they score! Shot from the point, gets through. And the T-Birds tied up on the power play. Wong took the shot. I think Gaskell might have got a piece on the way through. She leads the skate past the bench, but either way, the T-Birds answer back here on the power play. Oh, and of course, Grace Elliott, a body that you love to have in front of the net. 
on a power play like that, unfortunately sitting in the box, but Kordek does a fantastic job of getting herself in front of the net and helping out that way, screening her scene on the play. Well, that'll kill off the power play portion of the double minor, and that will even things up on the penalty board. Not your usual double minor where you get a second two minutes because, of course, they had the matching penalties as well. So it is a power play goal for the Thunderbirds, and we are tied at two here. Back and forth they go here in the opening three minutes of the third. UBC twice now today has been able to reply after going falling behind. Wait to see who it looks like. Have they given the credit for that goal yet? We'll wait and see here. And it is Sophia Gaskell right now being given credit for the goal. We'll wait for the full scoring play, but it was Wong who fired from the point, so she'll get an assist at the very least. We're all tied at two as McCallum steams into the Cataban zone. Firing it through, and there's a collision between a sliding Montreal defender, Racine, who had to get up and try to fight off a shot. Racine doesn't have her stick, but Ketaban able to clear the zone as Obracine collects herself. And her stick back in her hands as McKinnon tries to break back in. Peltier turning her aside inside the line, but Ketaban can't get it out. Fired back towards the goal by Baird. Just about four minutes gone in the third. Montreal took the lead early in the period, but very almost as quickly, UBC answering right back. Here comes Peltier with a shot, and that just missed. Here it comes right back out front. Just overskated there by Gagnon. Lively glass on that shot. And McKinnon also getting an assist on that goal by Gaskell. So Riley McKinnon with a pair of points here this afternoon. Pardon me, that's her first assist of the game. I feel a little ahead of myself. She's played so well, I gave her a phantom assist. Yeah, she's all over the ice playing so well today. There's a reason she wears that C for UBC as the puck cleared out to center ice. 2-2 Two -two the score, third period. The tightest game so far here at the GFL 2024 U Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy so back and forth between these two teams the puck up and down the ice of course scoring back and forth certainly looks a lot like their meeting last year in the bronze medal game another tightly contested affair that one finished 3-2 and this one could very well finish with that same score still 15 minutes to go though miss wagon back to the ubc zone a little too far for mckinnon as it's sent back in deep over there, Amélie Poiré-Lahou, who came oh so close to scoring late in the second, with a shot off the crossbar. As the Thunderbirds clear the zone, but that'll go all the way down the ice for icing against UBC. Just a minute apart, a minute and a half apart, those two goals here in the third period. So keeping things tight, keeping things exciting between these two teams. That's a mark of a good team, like a UBC team that's been able to answer back both times they've gone down. Yeah. You never want to be hanging back for too, too long, especially in a tournament like this one. And oh, yeah. That uh, it helps the nerves, right? It helps calm the nerves when you can equalize quickly. Now, UBC would love to get themselves their first lead of the game. They're right now making a line change, so Kataban with plenty of skating room to bring it out. Borela Hu, a nice move to get around Fleming into the UBC zone, driving wide. Paul Lahou, the shot stopped by Hugens, and another post-whistle meeting of the minds, although that one will dissolve pretty rapidly. Those coincidentals finally coming out of the box. So that'll get Elliot and Hardan back into the fray. Well, a lot of those uh, school kids have had to help head, head home for the day, but still a great crowd on hand sticking around for the conclusion of this one. All the UBC fans brought their buckets with them uh, here from BC. Yeah, is that a UBC thing? It, it is a UBC thing. If you were watching the, uh, the Canada West final against Alberta, they had a whole bunch of fans right behind the, uh, the benches just pounding on those buckets. 
So that's a pretty cool tradition they've got. Kind of like the Huskies women's basketball tradition with the Husky parents that bang wooden spoons on Tupperware in the, uh, in the pack. We used to call them the chip and dads because it was all the fathers, but uh, now it's a mixture of moms and dads and grandparents. Six and a half gone here in the third and a 2-2 game. Pass onto the tape of Jessica Boulanger, the Cataban captain. Trying to work her way in further, but knocked off the puck and sent back down to the Cataban zone. We see on a change, but Montreal can't take advantage. Duchesneau flipping it in to the UBC zone. Morris back there for it, but bumps there with Laloche. Pardon me, Peltier down there on the four check for Montreal. Cleared out once again. Louis Duchesneau circling at center. Couldn't connect with Pelche on the pass. But Picard is there in support. She's tripped up and another UBC penalty coming up as McCallum will be going to the box for the second time today. And the head of Ant to their seventh power play of the afternoon. Mm. They are calling it a bit tight here today though, Rihanna, oh, I would say. Yeah. Very, very tightly. But it's going both ways, of course. And unfortunately, we haven't seen Montreal do anything with their power play yet. BC did manage to get their last goal on the power play, so we'll see what happens here. Power plays are 7 2 right now for Montreal, but it is UBC who has the power play goal. And that's what has tied this thing up at two. That I talk about Montreal does not take a lot of penalties, and that's all held true here today. Rare for them to get a four minute one, too. Yeah, absolutely. They get set it up here with 12 and a half to go in the third. Aure Lahu coming together in the corner with Miss Wagon. It's played back to the line. Nado, the forward shot. That goes off the leg of Fiala and into the corner. Aure Lahu back to the line for Kellyanne LaForge. Working into the middle, back for Nado, a blast wide. That comes all the way back to LaForge. Nado, one touch to the circle across, but that was in the feet of Borela, who had some real potential. Everything but the finish. And Fiala flips it down into Montreal territory. Halfway through this McCallum minor. And a turnover now forced by Baird, who now takes it down to the corner. A chance to kill some more clock here on the PK. Baird doing stout work against a trio of Caravan. Still has the puck. What a good job there. Finally buried on the play. And the arm stays down as Garin leads the rush up the ice. Joanne Garin had the brief go-ahead goal here in the third for Montreal. And now that one's hammered. Look alive on the bench. That one, some friendly fire there for UBC. Heads up hockey when that puck's coming at you so quickly on the bench. Looks like everyone's okay. Nobody got yeah. uh, a puck to the dome there, so. Face off will be to the left of Elise Hugens. Shots just 18-17 UBC. About half of those shots came back in the first period. Yeah. It was 10-9 Montreal or UBC after one period. Just held in no. Picard couldn't quite keep that puck in at the line. And Wong just makes sure she knows she's there after the whistle. And again, these teams, if you haven't been here all day, they played each other last year in the bronze medal game. And there's obviously some history there. Oh yeah, no love lost between these two teams at all. You can see he's signaling yeah. for that, pent, that puck drop to go down a little bit. But... Yeah, trying to make the case maybe for an intentional offside there, but that certainly wasn't the case. Card was trying to keep that puck in the zone. The Forge gets it in, but not deep enough. And again, it just gets out despite the efforts of Jade Picard. He now brings it back in. Winding it around to the far side. Over there is Laloche, La but she's stripped of the puck. And away with it comes Fiala, working her way across the ice. In the Montreal territory as we're back to five on five. And the Thunderbirds, a perfect seven for seven on the kill this afternoon. Will that loom large for Montreal? Picard working back into the UBC zone. 
Down low for Peltier, trying to get it back. Picard off the heel of her stick. Buck still loose in the crease and cleaned up by Elliott, who calmly plays it off the wall and down. Kordick trying to catch up to it, but just a step ahead there on the play was defender for Montreal. That was Gervais back there. Stop out of play. We got a stoppage with 10.04 left in the third period. 2-2 game. Oh. Who's got the go-ahead goal on their stick? Exactly. Or are we going to see our first overtime today? Just might. We just might. And now uh, after some consultation, they are going to bring this face off deep into the Montreal zone. And that just deciding where the puck was played from before it went out. And they decided it was inside the line and off a Montreal stick. So that's why they drop it there. Ushino settling it down and now firing it ahead, but unable to settle that pass down was Dumont. So we'll have another faceoff back in the Catavan zone. 35 face-offs won for the Catavans compared to UBC's 20. So evening up a little bit, getting closer, but still 35. That's a significant edge in any game, I think, especially here at this tournament. Oh, yes. When you talk about, like, the best face-off teams having, like, a 54, 55 percent type of win rate, like, that's obviously higher than that today. Yeah. I'm not going to do the math in my head because that's not my strong suit. We're not mathematicians <laughs> up here. I was told there would be no math. And we've got another. Do we have a UBC penalty coming up here, or is that icing again? Pardon me. No, that's it is another, another penalty. penalty. It is Bassey going to the box, so... You know, despite their best efforts, UBC kind of their own worst enemies at some points here today. That's their eighth minor, and that'll take us to the media timeout here in the third. 2-2, the score between UBC and Montreal. You're watching the 2024 GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy on CBC. In the heart of Saskatoon, where the winters are long, hockey is not just a sport, it's a way of life. Behind every team, there's a community that supports them. At Connect Energy, we're proud to be a Saskatoon-based company that powers local businesses with natural gas options to help them thrive. We're excited to sponsor the 2024 GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship. Join us in supporting local businesses and the future of hockey. Nine thirty-seven to play in the third period. What has really been from start to this point one of the most entertaining games we've seen all season long here. Merle's belt to place. UBC Thunderbirds and Montreal Caravan nodded at two, and the Caravan going back to the power play. CBC Sports is the home of the universe of University Sports in Canada. The best U Sports Women's Volleyball teams head to Hamilton for this week's 2024 U Sports Women's Volleyball Championship. Catch the action exclusively today eat, uh, on CBC Gem, CBC Sports.ca, the CBC Sports app, and CBC Sports YouTube. U Sports on CBC. Chase the glory. Montreal going back to work on the advantage here. In the back half of the third and a deadlock score. Battle for it along the wall. You see content to keep the puck right here for as long as possible without a whistle. Wong down on her stomach, <laughs> just being dragged back by Boré Lahou. She was on the tow bar there, going up the bunny hill. <laughs> back in come the Caravan, Boré Lahou. For the Forge at the points. Buck 15 to go in the power play, Nadeau. Top of the circle, there's a nice move, roll out of the shot. Big save, Hugens. Rebound for Nadeau, shot stop, trickling along the line. And it's covered up by Hugens, or maybe one of the defenders down there. 
course, that would be a penalty shot. So it's got to be under Hugin somewhere. Roland, what a move there, and what a chance. Just walked right in. Took her time, got a nice shot off. Obviously, first time for either of us getting to see this Montreal team live and in person this year. And I've been really impressed with Juliette Roland today. Obviously, had an assist on the opening goal for Montreal, but she has been buzzing in the Ozone all day long. Oh, big time. A lot of big skills time. on her. Half a minute, or pardon me, halfway through the power play here for Montreal. The puck skips out. Lalosh can't get a handle on it, though, to the line. And Picard does well to keep the play alive, but now ganged by a pair of T-Birds, and the puck comes out. Kepler down the wing, trying to work around Boulanger, but Jessica Boulanger able to make the play defensively and get the puck back for the Catabank. Lalosh with a nice little move to get around Fleming, and now a wrist shot into the glove of Elise Hugens. Now we're at half a minute left. That's right, that exactly. <laughs> I, was, I was just getting ahead, you know? Both teams making changes to their specialty team units here. Shots now 21-19 UBC. The score still tied at two. 30 seconds of power play time. Terrio on the draw against Fiala. We've seen them square off many times here so far, and this time it's Fiala who gets the better of her counterpart. And McKinnon clears the zone. UBC has been so good on the penalty kill today, managing to kill seven or eight now. This is number eight if they can get it done. Ten more seconds in it. Lahu, Poire Lahu inside, but the puck escapes her grasp and now a big collision along the boards and the hands up i didn't do it it says long and this time the referees agree the doe going back as the power play is over and now ubc is eight for eight on the kill portic turning firing that goes off the forge who stood her ground ubc's penalty kill quickly becoming the big storyline here this afternoon Spending a lot of time in the box, and I mean, if they're gonna do that, keep doing that fantastic job of being able to kill it off. There's only about an 87% PK during this season, ranked third in the Canada West. Not bad whatsoever, but certainly nothing that would make your eyes pop out, but man, today they have been on point, on assignment. Under seven minutes left in the third. As back for it is Chloe Ducheneau being pressured from behind and then hauled down by Kordic, who's lucky to not get called there. She just grabbed her and pulled her down. WWE <laughs> Some moves. of the calls we've seen that UBC has fallen victim to today, that one surprises me that oh, they yeah. didn't get called. Garin from the circle, shot, kicked out, rebound, score! Montreal takes the lead with six. 20 to go! Jade Picard with the go-ahead goal for the Caravan. That's a three-point night for Picard. She assisted it on both goals there earlier in the game and then it nets that last one so beautifully. All big, open there. big rebound there. Much like we saw with Cassidy Rhodes' goal in the first. Maybe the first time flaw we've seen from Hugens today. She had to make the first save and couldn't control the rebound. And Montreal for the third time today has their nose in front by a goal and it comes with just over six minutes left in regulation. Jade Picard from the blue line stepping up and giving the Cataban a lead second team RSEQ All-Star this season. And of course, last year's our second Rookie of the Year, Jade Picard. She has the biggest goal of the season thus far for Montreal. Thorpe breaking back in for UBC. You certainly can't count out the Thunderbirds at any point and they only need one to get back level here. Thorpe trying to do it herself in front shot, rebound just over top of the net as Elliott came close to tying it up. Now another shot from the line and a right pad save by Racine. 
Elliott cycling it low for Thorpe. And again, the Thunderbirds who have answered quickly on each occasion that they've fallen behind, trying to do it for a third time. Shot from the line, stopped by Racine, who will give the Ketaban a chance to catch their breath with 5.09 to play. Big time, good call by Racine for taking that, icing the puck. Of course, that beautiful opportunity by UBC you saw in the replay, just up and over that crossbar by about an inch, inch and a half maybe. Really interesting to note as well, Picard, the blue liner with the go-ahead goal. UBC is the team that is known for producing from the back end because they had 90 points from their defense this season. Montreal had 44, and yet it's a defender for Montreal that puts the Catabin in front. That one's cleared off the glass and out. McKinnon blows down there by Etier. Finally gets control, turns it back. A Montreal player behind the play. That's Peltier who got a rough ride as she's slow to get up. Bordick, meanwhile, going down into the Cataban zone. Bassi now follows up. Bordick playing it to the line for Gaskell. Fakes the shot. Now carries on down into the corner. Bordick's at the end of her shift. Gaskell can't get the shot through. And Pouliot kicks it to her stick and skates it out to center. Rafael Pouliot into the far corner as the clock ticks down to four minutes left in the third. Cataban looking to avenge a loss to UBC in the bronze medal game last year. And wouldn't they relish a chance to bounce a team that's been smelling a national title since the opening face-off this season here in the quarterfinals? Elliott stripped of the puck by Duchesneau, who takes her into the corner boards. Charan, who has a goal here in the third, clears it out to center. Now, Joanne Garin back in her own zone. And sends it deep into the UBC zone. Three and a half to go as we keep our eyes on that UBC net. When will Graham Thomas decide to pull Hugan? Still maybe a little bit early for it, just the one goal deficit, but we will keep an eye on that UBC crease. Right now though, it's Picard who has the go-ahead goal. Firing it in deep for Montreal. Quickly back out, UBC. Can't keep possession though, as the Catamaran content to clear that puck down the ice. Terrio got a stick to it, so icing waved off. McCallum going back. Up for Thorpe. Ashton Thorpe looking to connect at the Montreal line with Rhodes, but that pass got by her. Down deep, Thorpe now, who set up a close chance just moments ago on her last shift. Playing it back to the line for Gaskell. A shot right through and a save by Racine. And no rebound. 2.32 to go. Nice slow skate. Hugens officially on the bench. UBC with that extra skater. Let's wait to see if we get the time. Sorry, uh, Rihanna. Oh. Let's wait to see if we get the time out here. And now Graham yep. Thomas trying there to milk that clock, trying yep. to get as much time as he can. Sorry, you were saying. Yeah, Hugens out. So of course UBC's got that extra skater. They were able to capitalize on one of their power plays today. So with that extra skater, what are we going to see here? What do you think UBC's game plan is going to be? Man, is there oh, on man. the bench writing it up? Yeah, they, this is a team, again, I mentioned it earlier, that they can produce from all, all over the ice, any position, any player. Yep. So that's going to be the challenge here for Montreal defensively with a six on or a, a six on five situation is you can't really key on any one or two players to try to take them out because then someone else will be open. So quick puck movement, uh, clean puck movement and try to find a lane, get that puck to the net. And I think you might need to find a greasy one here if you're UBC. I think so too. You know, make sure you've got somebody in there for that rebound. Of course, you're going to probably be seeing Elliot or Cordex sitting in front of that net as well. This face-off becomes very big. We've talked about the numbers in favor of Montreal here today, and this the biggest face-off so far, 36-25. So UBC's closed the gap a little bit here in the last few minutes, but this is clearly the biggest one. It's scrambled and controlled by the Ketaban, but Wong, no, can't quite hold it in. She does gain control, though, so the Thunderbirds will be able to bring it back in. Rhodes laying it in deep. 2.20 to go, net empty at the other end, six on five, UBC trying to find a tying goal. Played back to the line, Gaskell just 
returns it to Fiala. Hopped over her stick, though. Duchesneau will try the near side. That was the right play. Fired down the ice. This has eyes for the goal! Justine Peltier from her own blue line makes it 4-2 Montreal. Of course, you're always, always going to love those empty net goals for some insurance. But remember, there is still two minutes left in this game. There's plenty of time for BC to have some good opportunities here. Don't count them out just yet. They are such a heavy hitting uh, offensive team. But Montreal defense can agree right there to shut them down. Still Huge. two minutes left. Yeah, that is a ton of time. Hugens back in the net for the faceoff, but as soon as UBC gets the puck, expect to see her going back to the bench. LaPlante hits it to McCallum, who banks it in. There goes Hugens, and back for the puck goes Nadeau, but cutting off that pass is McCallum, and the Thunderbirds have it, but Bassey couldn't keep control. Anna Van Havit again, Garan plays it forward. A great job there by Pepler to knock that puck out of midair. And back in comes McCallum. Squeezed off the puck along the boards, but Bassey able to bat it down. McCallum forcing it into the corner. Back for it goes Nadeau. Cycling it to the far point. LaPlante was waiting over there for UBC. Under a minute and a half to go. T-Birds need two. Down the wall for Bassey. Back for Fiala. Her shot off his stick and off the glass behind the Montreal goal. As they fence for it down low in the trapezoid. Nadeau. Left it behind, it's thrown in front, but well positioned there was Jade Picard, who has been outstanding here today for Montreal as she just makes the safe play off the glass and down the ice. We're down to the final minute in the third. Cataban on the verge of our first upset of the tournament. Off the glass, out to center. That hops over a stick. UBC back on it. Desperation time for the Thunderbirds, but that is not going to do it. Duchesneau now a chance to kill more time. As the Ketaban in no hurry with the two-goal lead. Finally, Duchesneau flips it to the line, but club down there by Rhodes. Cassidy Rhodes is shot, and that was deflected wide. Under 30 seconds left now. Chance now to clean it up. Boulanger gets the puck out to the UBC line. And now, not enough time here for UBC. Rhodes. Gets it to Baird, who fires from the line, and that's a pad save and an offside whistle blows against UBC, and you can just see the Thunderbirds' body language. They know this one's over. 13 seconds left, and a two-goal deficit. And after all the winning they've done this season, this is a team that was basically national title or bust, and they're about to get bounced in the quarterfinals. 13.7 seconds to go. Thunderbirds reminding themselves get that sixth player on the ice. One and done hockey, Rihanna. This is how it happens. You don't play your best on the day. That's it. Here's one more shot at the empty net. That's wide. It'll be an icing call, but this is elementary now at this point. 9.3 on the clock. And how about the Montreal at a man? Oh. A little vengeance for last year, and now they will be moving on to the semifinals. Big, big vengeance for them. Of course, that 3-2 loss to UBC last year in the bronze medal had to have stung, but it was fuel for them today. And the puck in the corner. Final seconds ticking off. And that will do it. The Montreal Ketaban pulling off the upset here as the seven seed knocks off the number two seed UBC Thunderbirds. 4-2 to punch their ticket to the semifinal. Wow. What an incredible game by the Caravans. Of course, UBC played so fantastic as well. Twice they were able to answer to those goals that Montreal had scored, but unfortunately that third one just couldn't do it. And then Montreal netting that empty net goal just sealed it this afternoon. So, elation for the Montreal Catabin, who still remain alive in their chance for a third straight, or not a third straight, but a third national title. And for UBC, that national championship continues to elude them 
They'll have to wait till next year to mount another charge. We'll step aside and come back with some post-game coverage here from Merlis Belcher Place as the Montreal Cataban knock off the UBC Thunderbirds 4-2. to two. You're watching the GFL 2024 U Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy on CBC. Apologies, they're not in a break here. So the post-game ceremony going on here at Merlis Belcher Place, and we'll have the players of the game selections. Of course, one player from each team will be recognized. This is always, I mentioned this yesterday, it's tough for the losing team to, to go through this, but also some recognition for them for their efforts. But man, talk a bit about their disappointment. Let's talk about Montreal, though. This is a Montreal team that has obviously a lot of experience at this championship, yeah. but head coach Isabel Leclerc said last year as hosts, it didn't feel quite like a full national championship because they didn't have the travel and all the other things to that, that go into being in a national championship. So for a lot of her players, she felt this is kind of a first time experience for them doing the full trip and the whole thing. And they certainly handled themselves well here today. Coming all the way out west, picking up a W here in the quarterfinals. So, of course, they punched their ticket into the semifinal. We'll find out a little bit later on today, this evening, as to whether or not they're going to be playing the New Brunswick Reds or the Toronto Varsity Blues. And those both excellent potential opponents. Of course, UNB, the AUS champs this year, as they got past St. FX in the Atlantic Conference Final. St. FX, of course, has, is here as well. They've fallen to the consolation side of the bracket in Toronto Varsity Blues. They went to overtime with Waterloo in the McCaw Cup in the OUA final, so they were a shot away from being the conference champs there. And so they are the sixth seed, but they are very dangerous indeed, and they have played plenty at this tournament in recent years as well. So players of the game being presented and the Montreal player of the game. She scored the game winner and set up two others, Jade Picard second year defender and she is the Montreal player of the game and she just was so impressive here today so good she was such a productive player Joelle Fiala the one of the local players for UBC here is the Thunderbirds player of the game and it's like they're not going to pose for the photo op together as that sometimes happens but I kind of understand it between these two teams they might not want to share a smiley photo after the game but Thunderbirds now will have to regroup and come back as they want to still finish off on a high note. They will be playing in the consolation semifinals on Saturday. That game will be, if I'm not mistaken, at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific time here on Saturday. They'll play the loser of tonight's final quarter final. That'll be the second game of four on Saturday. UBC, not where they wanted to be playing on Saturday, but they still, again, to finish off on a high note, and the Catabama, meanwhile, they're moving on to play the winner of tonight's game between UNB and the Toronto Varsity Blues. That'll do it for us from here from Merlis Belcher Place. On behalf of Rihanna Kaminsky, and I'm Ryan Flaherty, and of course, on behalf of our entire production crew here at Merlis Belcher Place, thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to tune in for tonight's game between the UNB Reds and the Toronto Varsity Blues. That comes your way at 8, 9 p.m. Eastern, six o'clock Pacific time. Thanks for watching and tune in tonight. U Sports on CBC presented by the Championnat du Sport à Radio Canada, une présentation du gouvernement du Canada, the government of Canada, Nike, just do it, Fettler, Fox 40, celebrating more than a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program. Pierre, partenaire des prix de l'entraîneur de l'année U-Sport. Veraburn, medical supply partner of Varsity Athletics since 1979. Partenaire du sport universitaire depuis 1979. Baron, exclusive supplier of U-Sports championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusif des bagues des championnats U-Sport. By Connect Energy, proud presenting partner of this U-Sports championship. Par Connect Energy, Pierre, partenaire de ce championnat U-Sport. 
and by GFL, proud title partner of the 2024 GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship. Par GFL, fier partenaire en titre du championnat de hockey féminin U Sport 2024.